What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over how to install the newest type in FPV, the DJI HD FPV system, into your quad if you're running the Flight 1 Revolt or Millivolt OSD flight controllers. So for those of you living under a rock for the past year, DJI has released an amazing FPV system that is full HD. Now the problem with digital OSD is that we actually can't handle doing the OSD like we do an analog video the same way on the flight controller side. So it's a little bit different to get the OSD set up on your Revolt OSD or your millivolt OSD compared to using, say, an analog camera with the VTX. That being said, it is still extremely simple. It is just one more why you have to solder on. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take my DJI HD FPV system that I've already went ahead. I've put it in the back of my Wild Willy frame. I've also gone ahead, I've added a little bit of Shugu onto the back of the antenna connectors there because these antenna connectors pop off all the time and it's incredibly frustrating. And I'm gonna show you how to wire up the DJI HD FPV system as well as a fun new little toy we have here, which is the Cadex Vista FPV system. For those of you who don't know, Cadex just released this new HD FPV system, which is super tiny. It's a tiny 20 by 20 stack with the DJI camera attached already to it. And this gives you almost the exact same HD FPV experience as the full-size DJI system does. Really the only downside I've seen so far is that I believe the signal strength is not as great, hence why it only has one antenna with it, and it does not have onboard DVR recording, but that doesn't really matter if you're also carrying a GoPro because the GoPro quality is much better than the DVR HD video. Now that being said, you can still do HD DVR on the goggle side of things, but it won't be as high quality as if you're doing HD onboard DVR recording. So let's go ahead, let's cut to the chase. Let me show you how to wire up the standard DJI FPV system to this Revolt OSD right here. All right, as you can see here in the back of the quad, we have placed our DJI HD FPV unit and coming out of the back of it, is our little cable harness with all of the wires that are supposed to be wired up to our flight controller. And as you can see, we have this big, huge little honking board here. And what this is, is this is actually a 12 volt regulator. So the DJI FPV system can only take 4S battery voltage, but this drone here is designed to take 6S battery voltage. The 6S battery voltage directly to this unit would fry it and that would be a big waste of money. So if you plan on flying 6S, the first thing you have to do is splice in this 12 volt bed. Now, as you can see, I have already done that and it is super easy. You can get these guys off of Amazon or eBay or really anywhere. They're super cheap, super easy to get a hold of. I will put a link in the description below to where you can get one of these guys. And all you have to do to wire it up is you take the red and the black wires or the positive and negative or the VBAT and ground wires coming out of the DJI FPV unit, put it to the 12 volt and ground on this back and then go ahead and take the voltage in and ground. And all you're gonna wanna do is solder those directly to your battery leads. And boom, just like that, we now have power feeding into our DJI FPV system. So at this point in time, you'll actually be powering the DJI FPV unit if you were to plug the battery in and you will be transmitting video and you will be able to use it, but you will not have any sort of control from the flight controller over the VTX but this is definitely a usable state if you didn't want to do any PID tuning or any kind of stuff through the OSD menu on your quad. Now that the easy part is done, I'm gonna go ahead, put the flight controller back on, and I make sure to have the pads facing up because it's just easier to solder to. And I'm gonna show you guys where and how to solder the last couple of wires to to make sure you get everything to work. All right, so now that we have the DJI unit being powered through the 12 volt back, since I'm running 6S, or at this point you could be running a 4S quad, 4S battery voltage, straight into the DJI FPV unit and you'll be totally fine. So with these four wires left, you have a gray wire, an orange wire, a brown wire, and a white wire. And personally, the very first things I wire up is the ground wire. Now the ground wire can go on literally any ground pad on the flight controller. Personally, I go ahead and put it on this bank close to the UR1 ground just because I use the DJI remote controller, which also requires the orange wire. And it just makes it so those two wires are close together. So this is the point where I wanna put out the only three wires that you need if you are not using the DJI controller is the brown wire, the white wire, and the gray wire. 
The orange wire is your DJI S-Bus line. So this is used if you are using the DJI controller as well. If you're using like Crossfire or FreeSky or DSMX, anything else other than the DJI radio that comes with it, you will not need this orange wire. Now, if you are using the DJI radio, this orange wire is gonna be your S-Bus line and that is gonna be going to TX1. So since I'm gonna be using the DJI controller, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna solder the ground and the DJI S-Bus line to the ground pad and to the TX1 pad. Now keep in mind, if you are using DJI's S-Bus line, you are also going to have to make sure that you solder this jumper where it says TX1 and INV, solder those two together, not TX1 and NOR for normal because the S-Bus protocol from DJI is inverted. So let's go ahead, let's solder those guys on. All right, so we have the brown wire going to ground. We have the orange wire going to TX1. We have our jumper TX1 to INV soldered together. So now we have control link. The last two things is soldering up the TX RX wires. So just again, the white wire is the RX from the DJI unit. So that's to go to TX3, because TX to RX. And then this gray wire is the transmitting line, which means this has to go to RX3. Again, transmitter. To receiver so let's go ahead let's put our white rx wire to tx3 tx3 is this pad right here it is the one usually used for things like smart audio but in terms of dji it's uart3 or tx3 to make sure the dji system can work all right now that we have the rx wire soldered on let's go ahead and solder the gray wire which is the transmitter which means the transmitter to receiver this gray wire is going to go to rx3 which is located right next to TX1, which is where the S-Bus line goes to. And that is it. That is literally all you have to do. Red and black, positive and negative, go to the battery leads. If you're running 6S, make sure to put a little 12 volt back like this right in the middle. Otherwise, you will have a bad time. The unit will fry on 6S. The brown ground line goes to ground on the flight controller. The gray transmitter line goes to RX3 on the flight controller. If you are using the DJI S-Bus, you're gonna solder the orange wire to TX1, and then make sure you solder the little jumper, TX1 and inverted. And last but not least, the white wire or the RX line is gonna go to TX3 on the flight controller. And for wiring up, that is it. Now, all of this stuff will automatically detect through the Falco X Wizards. If you're using the DJI S-Bus, it's gonna detect that. It will also detect that you are using the DJI FPV system and will set stuff accordingly in the flight controller to make sure it works. Now, there's one more step you have to actually do inside of the DJI goggles once you get this set up and rolling through the Falco X configurator. Now, since we don't have 100% DJI OSD support, you still have to set this guy up through the Falco X companion which a link which the link to the new alpha builds will be in the description below to make sure you get the right version and the right GUI so you can get that set up right but right now we do have the ability to change PIDs rates and filters in the DJI OSD so I'm gonna go ahead hop on the goggles and I will show you exactly how you would set that up and use that through the DJI goggles. Now, if you're hooking this up to a millivolt OSD, you wanna hook everything up to the same place you would on the revolt OSD. Now, you will have to splice some of these wires into the connectors for the millivolt OSD, but as long as the DJI S-Bus goes to TX1, ground goes to any ground, the white UART RX coming out of the DJI unit goes to TX3, and the gray UART TX goes to RX3, it will function exactly the same as if you were hooking it up to a Revolt OSD. But before I hop into the goggles and show you guys how to set, but before I hop into the goggles and show you guys how to enable the OSD control in the DJI goggles, I'm gonna show you guys how you would wire up this new little VTX straight from CADX, the Vista system. A little 20 by 20. And here, if we put it over next to it, you can see a little size comparison, about half the size of this giant hopping DJI unit over here. This guy is gonna hook up exactly the same way as the full-size DJI system would except on this exact model we have solder pads right here I'm pretty sure the production models at ship will have a connector somewhere so it's gonna basically be the exact same wire harness that comes out of the DJI unit is gonna go to the exact same places in here the DJI S bus HDL goes to TX1 make sure your jumper is soldered accordingly power to power unless you're running 6s in which case you want to put the power to a 12 volt back like you see right here 
All right, hold up. I had a little error earlier going on about how you would hook up the Cadex Vista system. Unlike the full-size DJI FPV system, the Cadex Vista system can actually take up to 6S battery input. The only real annoying part about setting up the DJI system is that you have to have a 12 volt regulator in the drone if you are trying to run 6S on it. The Cadex Vista system solves that problem. You can literally hook it right up to the battery pads. No regulators needed. Doesn't matter, 4S, 6S, it will take it. That is an awesome feature about this guy. Ground to ground, TX on the FPV system goes to RX3, and RX on the FPV system goes to TX, and that is it. So now that I've attached all my wires to hook up the Cadex Vista system, I'm gonna go ahead and just for demonstration purposes, walk you guys really quickly how you would set this system up, even though it is pretty much exactly the same as the full DJI system. So these top two red and black wires are your power and ground. So you can solder these guys directly to your battery pads, which are hidden under the flight controller right there and once that's done it's going to basically wire up exactly the same way so the white wire i have here is the rx coming out of the cadex system which means this is going to go to tx3 on the revolt so let's go ahead and solder that guy on the next wire which is my yellow wire right here will be the tx coming out of the cadex system which means it's going to go to rx3 which as we saw earlier is right next to tx1 so let's go ahead and tap that on just like that. The next wire is the black ground wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder that next to RX3. And like the full-size DJI FPV system, the black or brown ground wire can go to any ground on the top of the flight controller. Personally, I just use this ground up here next to TX1 and RX3, just because it's next to where all of the other wires are going to. And last but not least, you have your DJI HDL or SBUS line, which just like the full-size FPV system, is gonna get soldered onto TX1. And now that guy soldered on, again, like the DJI system, make sure you have this jumper soldered between TX1 to INV for inverted. And then you have successfully hooked up your Cadex Vista FPV system. And the next step I'm gonna show you through the goggles to basically get the custom OSD working it is exactly the same between both of these units. So let's go ahead, let's hop into the goggles and see how you set them up in there. All right, now that you've already installed either your DJI FPV system or the Cadex Vista FPV system, the next step is to update your flight controller to the latest alpha build. Now, this is being shot in late January of 2020. I'm sure later on in the future, this will be on the beta or the stable builds, but as of right now, head on over to flightone.com and go to the downloads in the very top of the page and make sure to go to the alpha builds. So once you've updated the sky, got them rolling, you went ahead, you went through the wizards just like any other normal Falco X Quad, there's one final step. And you basically just have to go ahead, get your goggles out, get your radio out, and we gotta go ahead, we have to turn on the custom OSD in the DJI menu, and that will allow you to use the new custom OSD so you can see things like your arm status, GPS, almost all of the normal OSD things that you get on analog, now you can see them in digital. Also, as of right now, you can change things like some of your filters, your PIDs, your rates. A lot of the basic things are able to be edited through the DJI menu and full DJI support is coming very soon. So go ahead, let's get the goggles powered on. Let's get the radio turned on as well. Go ahead and plug in your battery. So as you can see, this is just the standard DJI vision. So let's go ahead, go into the menu button. I'm gonna go to settings, go on down to display, and for custom OSD, once you turn that on, boom, you can see in the top you see disarmed, flight one, and the battery voltage per cell of the battery currently plugged. Now I also wanna point out, you actually can't go into the OSD and edit the OSD right now in Falco X like you can with the analog, but using the Falco X configurator, you can actually use the OSD builder tool and set your OSD up and what you want in there. And if we jump back into the goggles, and pull up the menu again. You can even see if you go under settings, go down to PID tuning. We can go down to PID. You can change your roll, pitch, yaw, all your P's, I's and D's. You can even go down to filter PP, which I believe is just your D term filtering. Now, if you go to what is FLIT, which I'm assuming is a typo for FILT, for filter, this is the gyro filter. You can change your cutoffs in here. You can go to rate, you can change your roll, pitch, and yaw rates. And as you can see, the roll, pitch, and yaw RC rates are a decimal point. Basically, these are just divided by a hundred of what you would normally be. Once you've done all your changes, you can go up and hit the good old save and exit, and you're done. 
So yeah, there's basic OSD functionalities as of right now. You can change the really basic things like PIDs, filters, rates. Full OSD support is coming, but right now you can almost do everything except for set the drone up in the OSD, which is amazing. This HD FPV system has really come leaps and bounds in the last couple months. And honestly, I really think it's gonna take over. Yeah, that is it. The Cadex Vista system is pretty much the exact same setup as the full-size DJI FPV system. And it really is that simple. Now I am gonna leave pinouts and links in the description below. So you do have a hard copy of all this information if you wanna double check and make sure everything's going to the right places. But as you can see, it is super easy to wire up Flashing Falco X is easier than ever, and now we are starting to get full HD OSD support, so things are moving really quickly. But yeah, I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you are not subscribed. If you liked this video, found it informative, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below if there's any info you wanna know. Go ahead and let me know what you guys think about this DJI FPV system, especially if you're excited about this tiny little Vista system like I know I am, and I'll see you guys next time.